considering that the properties of equality are somewhat similar to the properties of congruence, like the first part here looks like the reflexive property of equality. Second would be the addition property of equality. Third and fourth looks like the multiplication property of equality. And we have fifth that whatever you subtract at the left side should be subtracted as well at the right side. Six talks about transitivity. And lastly, seven talks about symmetry. Considering the equation for x equals 20, if we want to solve for x, we just have to divide both sides by 4 and we have x equals 5. Now, one might say that if we have the same properties in equality and congruence, if we are to solve the congruence for x is congruent to 8 modulo 15, can we just also divide this before? With this theorem, left cancellation and congruence is definitely applicable, but we can only do this if A and M are relatively prime. For the benefit of others, when we say A and M are relatively prime, it means that their greatest common divisor, or GCD, is 1. So this theorem here asserts us that we can cancel out the A here and have a simplified answer, B is congruent to C modulo M. So in our example here, 68 is congruent to 8 modulo 15, Notice that we can rewrite 68 into 4 times 17, 8 as 4 times 2. And so having now 4 and 15 to be relatively prime, we can just cancel out the 4 here and have a simplified answer. 17 is congruent to 2 modulo 15. So in the congruence, 4x is congruent to 8 modulo 15. Notice that we can factor out the 4 here and have 4x congruent to 4 times 2 for 8 modulo 15 and since 4 and 15 are relatively prime we can cancel out the 4 here and so we have solved this congruence and have x is congruent to 2 modulo 15 and this would imply us that the values for x that would satisfy this congruence would be the equivalence class of 2. Let's verify this answer. For the equivalence class of 2 with respect to modulo 15, that would be in the form 2 plus 15k where k would be element of the set of integers. And so having now say k equals 2, so this would now be 2 plus 15 times 2 and this gives us 32. And so substituting this to our given congruence for x congruent to 8 modulo 15, we now have 4 times x, in this case 32, and that gives us 128. And to check if this is congruent to 8 modulo 15, we just have to subtract 8 from 128, and this should be divisible by 15. And yes, 32 is a solution to our congruence because 4 times 32, 128, minus 8 is 120, and 120 is divisible by 15. Having another possible solution to this congruence, we can pick k equals 3 in this equivalence class and have the answer 47, and 4 times 47 is really congruent to 8 modulo 15. If you want to know about equivalence class, then have the suggested video there on how to get the equivalence class of a given modular arithmetic. Now, as we have mentioned earlier, we can do left cancellation if A and M are relatively prime. But what if they really are relatively prime, but then we cannot factor out that A? How do we solve the given congruence? Like in this problem that A equals 7, M equals 15, they are relatively prime, but we cannot cancel out the 7 because we cannot factor out 7 from 4. To solve such congruence, we'll be needing the aid of an inverse modulo m. Inverse of a modulo m or multiplicative inverse of a modulo m has this definition. We would consider x as a multiplicative inverse of a modulo m if a times x is congruent to 1 modulo m and a and m are relatively prime. 
To picture this out, let's try to solve the multiplicative inverse of 3 modulo 26. That is, we're trying to solve for the x that would satisfy 3x is congruent to 1 modulo 26. Now notice that 3 times 9 is congruent to 1 modulo 26 because 3 times 9 is 27 and 27 is congruent to 1 modulo 26. Aside from 9, you can also think about 35 because 3 times 35 is 105 and 105 is congruent to 1 modulo 26. Definitely, we have infinite solutions to the inverse of 3 modulo 26. But notice that in the context of congruence, 35 is just congruent to 9 modulo 26. And so they just belong to the same equivalence class. And that would be the equivalence class of 9 modulo 26. Again, if you need a background for equivalence class, please watch the suggested video. Let's generalize now how to solve for the inverse of a modulo m. First, we need to get the equivalence class of 1 in a given modulo. Once we have the equivalence class of 1 modulo m, we will pick a member of this set that is divisible by a. To have a simplified answer for this congruence, it's preferable to get the first member that is either towards the positive infinity or negative infinity. Take note of your answer in step 2 because we will divide that by a and the answer will be our multiplier to ax and 1. Once you're done multiplying in step 3, we will just have to simplify that if needed. Let's apply these steps in solving for the congruence 3x is congruent to 1 modulo 26. So first, we have to get the equivalence class of 1. In this case, that would be 1 plus 26k. For visual learners, it's preferable that you have to write few terms towards positive infinity or negative infinity so that step 2 will be easy for you. For step 2, let's have the first number, say in this case, towards positive infinity that is divisible by 3. So in that case, that would be 27. For the third step, we have to divide this 27 by our a, and our a here is 3. And so 27 divided by 3 gives us 9. And it says that this answer will be our multiplier to our ax and 1. And so 9 times 3x would give us 27x and 1 times 9 would give us 9. Now, since 27 is congruent to 1, being part of the equivalence class of 1, we can substitute 27 by 1, and so we now have 1x or just x, and that will be congruent to 9 modulo 26. There you go. We have the solution for x here, that is, x will be the equivalence class of 9 that will satisfy the congruence 3x congruent to 1 modulo 26. And by definition, that would be the inverse of a or the inverse of 3 modulo 26. Considering that solving for the inverse of a modulo m is part of the general way of solving for the given congruence, this should also help us in solving our previous example earlier, just in case we forgot about that previous theorem. So yes, let's make use of the concept of inverse a modulo m in solving the congruence 4x is congruent to 8 modulo 15 without the aid of the theorem that we had earlier. And the theorem earlier says that we can cancel out the 4 here so as long as 4 and 15 are relatively prime. So yes, first step would be to get the equivalence class of 1 with respect to modulo 15 and that would be 1 plus 15k where k would be element of the set of integers. And listing some of the elements in this set, we now have this. And in this set, the first member that is divisible by 4 is 16. Mm -hmm. 
Now in the third step, we need to divide 16 by our a, and a here is 4, and so 16 divided by 4 is 4, and this 4 will be our multiplier to our ax and 1. And so multiplying 4 to our congruence, 4x is congruent to 5 modulo 15, we now have 16x is congruent to 32 modulo 15. And considering 16 to be part of the equivalent set of 1, which means that 1 is congruent to 16, we can substitute 16 by 1 and now have x is congruent to 32 modulo 15. And now we are down to the last step, that is to simplify the given congruence. For the benefit of others, when we say that the congruence is simplified, our b should be less than m and b is a positive integer. As of the moment, our b, which is 32, is indeed positive integer, but we need this to be less than m or 15. And so simplifying the congruence 32 modulo 15, we just have to continuously subtract 15 from 32 until we find that positive integer, which is less than 15. And yes, in this case, that would be 2. So 32 is congruent to 2 modulo 15. If you want to know more about how to solve this type of congruence, just click the suggested video. And yes, using this algorithm, we have the answer x congruent to 2 modulo 15, which is of the same answer that we got earlier. Now try to solve this and let's compare answers. Equivalence class of 1 module 15 will have the form 1 plus 15k where k is an element of the set of integers. The next step would require us to get the first positive number that is divisible by 7 in the equivalence class of 1. And so we just have to continuously add 15 to 1 until we find that first positive number that is divisible by 7. So we have 1 plus 15 equals 16, plus 15 gives us 31. Keep on pressing equals until we find that positive number that is divisible by 7. There you go, we have 91 which is divisible by 7. As for a multiplier, that would be 13 because 91 divided by 7 is equal to 13. Considering 13 as our multiplier, we now have this. Considering 91 to be part of the equivalence class of 1, it means that 91 can be substituted by 1, and so we now have x is congruent to 52 modulo 15. Yet this congruence is not simplified yet, and so simplifying 52 modulo 15, we continuously subtract 15 from 52 until we find a positive number that is less than 15. In this case, that would be 7. Hence, the solution to our congruence is x is congruent to 7 modulo 15. Let's verify our answer. x congruent to 7 modulo 15 means that all the numbers that is congruent to 7 modulo 15 will satisfy our given congruence 7x congruent to 4 modulo 15. And yes, x congruent to 7 modulo 15 is the same thing as the equivalence class of 7 modulo 15. Getting some elements in this set, we just have to add 15 from 7 or subtract 15 from 7. So we have these elements.
Observe the elements in this set would really satisfy the congruence 7x congruent to 4 modulo 15. Earlier, we got the algorithm in solving the linear congruence if A and M are relatively prime. Aside from that algorithm, we discussed a general way in solving the linear congruence and that would be with the use of inverse of A modulo M. But we had the consideration that A and M should still be relatively prime. But how about this congruence? Our A here is 10 and M is 52. And clearly, they are not relatively prime because their GCD is 2. Does that mean that we cannot solve this congruence? The discussion for this type of congruence will be in a separate video, but for now, try to solve these congruences.